Hello guys and welcome back to our classes which are being conducted online. We are still under lockdown and uh, we will be continuing the lockdown for some more time uh, if I am not wrong. We still ha halfway through with the 21 day lockdown and uh, we still have few more days to go. So let's not waste time. Let us keep uh, doing our job as and when we can keep our studies going, keep our lives as normal as possible, as normal as it can be possible during such a lockdown. But uh, let's take a resolution that we will all say, stay safe. I hope all of you are safe. I hope all of you are uh, within your houses, staying safe, washing your hands, covering your mouth when it's required. Stay safe guys and I'll uh, keep keep sending you these videos as much as possible. We'll continue with our branding, brand planning and management uh, class. And what we're going to see today is uh, something which is uh, part of uh, the fifth unit. And uh, it is going to be the strategic brand manning management process it's going to take some time to finish this entire process it won't be finished in one video maybe three or four videos are required there are four steps in this i'm planning to make one video per step so this video will take care of that but before that let me give you a brief introduction about what is this uh, every brand has to have a strategically managed process for building and sustaining and growing the brand in future three words building sustaining and growing that is first you have to build a brand then you have to keep sustaining the brand and then keep growing the brand so that there is overall development and economic benefit social benefit for everybody who is concerned so let's start with our today's uh, class on strategic brand management process uh, b before that i would like to acknowledge something that uh, most of my uh, material for this ppt i have taken from this excellent book by kevin lane keller called brand uh, build strategic brand management building measuring and managing brand equity it's a global edition which i have referred to beautiful book very in-depth very um, comprehensive lot of diagrams lots and lots and lots of uh, examples because that's what you know fulfills and, and uh, that's what rounds off and completes uh, an, a, 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 an investigation or an answer so i have taken most of my concepts from of about strategic brand management process from this book uh, but I have given a twist in the sense that I have tried I have tried to keep this uh, original by using Indian examples. This book contains a lots of good examples from uh, US, UK, Australia, Canada. Uh, in 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 the developing uh, developed world, I would take more of Indian examples because they are. What we are we are in India and it's better if we take Indian examples because it will help us understand the concepts better if we take ads and ad campaigns which are related to our geographical proximity. So I'll take Indian examples as much as possible. Here and there I might take some international examples which I have, might have already uh, uh, spoken about in the class. But in this video I will try to keep as much as possible Indian examples. There is also an assignment for you people in this video, which I will come at, at, in, in some time. Uh, what you have to do and how you have to send it to me would be told in this video. Okay, so we'll start the video. If you can get your hands on this book, please get your hands on this book. Excellent material around 600 650 pages. Beautiful uh, book. Okay, so thanks a lot. Uh, I would like to acknowledge Kevin Lane Keller, thanks a lot for your wonderful book and wonderful insights into strategic brand management process. 
okay so let's get into uh, what it is and that would be what is strategic brand management process design it's it's all about designing and implementing of marketing programs and activities for what for building measuring and managing brand equity at the end everything boils down to brand equity brand equity is what sustains a brand brand equity is what makes a person pay that much more extra for your brand for a company's brand as it uh, 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 than what it actually would cost right um so strategic brand management process is are the activities which are designed and implemented to build the brand build measure and manage the brand equity of a particular product or a particular brand okay so moving forward this process has four steps four main steps and in this video i'll be taking the first step the other st other steps i will take in the following videos the four steps are first of all we have to identify and develop plans for the branding identify and develop brand plans second step is designing and implementing brand marketing programs designing and implementing brand marketing programs third step is measuring and interpreting brand performance and the last step is growing and sustaining brand equity identify and develop brand plans design and implement brand marketing programs measuring because measurement is important without measuring we will not be able to know why what has worked in the first step and second step so we need to measure measuring is important to understand second step and first step and finally we have growing and sustaining brand equity for future purposes okay so these are the four steps include in, involved in strategic brand management process so in this video like i said we will take identifying and developing brand plans that is step number 1 of strategic brand management process theek okay? hai for this step the object is objective is to identify and develop brand plans what are the plans we are to we are going to work implement how do we come up with a plan all these questions will be answered in this particular stage and this stage has will take help of three models three models will help in formulating going about the first step of identifying and developing the brand plans the three models are they are they provide crucial micro and macro perspectives on successful brand building these three models are brand positioning model brand resonance model and brand value chain model so we'll take one after the other we'll take these three models and how they help in developing identifying and developing brand plans we will not be getting into doing a brand plan as and uh, 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 when required because as journalism students we don't need to uh, worry that much about Uh, uh about brand uh, developing a particular brand plan but it's important that you understand the theory of you understand the process of uh identifying and developing brand plans so there are three models brand positioning brand resonance and brand value chain model which will help us identify and develop brand plans so we'll take the first one in the first one so brand positioning model is the first one it helps establish competitive advantages in the minds of customers in the marketplace 
in the last semester if you remember we had discussion discussed about what positioning is even this semester i had given you a little bit of uh, positioning uh, statements we had discussed about what is the positioning and how it is different from a brand how it is different from a brand what is the positioning statement what is the uh, company wants positioning basically helps establish competitive advantages in the minds of customers in the ma marketplace what is positioning it is defining our desired or ideal brand knowledge structures and here is where we get technical that is establishing points of parity and points of difference to establish the right brand identity and brand image in simple words what it means is that positioning means what the company wants the customer to think about it it is not what the customer thinks about it she might think very different from what the company wants her to think i as a company would want my customer to think that i am a b c my customer would with her own uh, mindset with her own experiences she might take the a b c of what i give her and then she say okay i am not convinced about a and b but i will definitely consider c but i have my own input to it so i'm going to add d and e also here so that d and e comes from the customer but that will not be part of the positioning because that is not what the company wants the company wants what it wants to define the desired and ideal brand knowledge structure what is the knowledge of your brand or the company's brand in the customer's mind and the structures that is positioning and this is done by establishing points of parity and points of difference to establish the right brand identity and brand image now let us see what is points of what are points of parity and points of difference they are very simple to understand okay so let's take points of difference pods first points of difference are those elements in a brand which provide a competitive advantage it is a reason why the consumers feel that they need to buy the brand what makes a product different separate distinct from other products in the similar category if it is a smartphone what makes this smartphone different from other smartphones this is important and this is what point of points of difference is if we take the example of a uh, parachute coconut oil from the indian market it, one of the most uh, one of the leading uh, leading brands of coconut oils in india is parachute and if you look at uh, parachute what makes it different it may be the round bottle it may be the quality it may be the anti uh, what's that called during the winter season the coconut oil becomes thickens so anti thickening uh, properties it might be the fragrance uh, so these are the points of difference from other oils so that it, every brand needs to have a point of difference it's kind of you know, unique selling proposition what makes you sell what is unique about your uh, uh, product on the other hand the point of parity is totally opposite what does the product have similarity with other products points of difference are differences points of parity means what are the elements which are similar with its competition whereas points of difference become the reason why the customer should buy absence of points of parity might be a reason why the person will drop the brand again coming back to uh, parachute coconut oil points of parity would be of course it is a coconut oil it has to be an oil it has to have a shelf life it has to have a expiry date all these things are similar if these things are not there then there might be a problem for the customer saying that okay before coming to the difference i need to know what are the similarities with other products and then i will decide whether with whether i will buy it with the product but these 
points of parity means certain elements which have to be common for that brand to be categorized as a brand in that particular category. Did you understand the difference? I'm sure you can understand the difference with uh, many other products which you have uh, used in your particular thing. So points of difference is what makes the product different and points of parity is what is it that it makes that it will be uh, considered to be bought. If you go for uh, a biscuits, biscuit, biscuit uh, thing, ITC has Sunfeast biscuits. So when Sunfeast got into, uh, bis so when ITC got into the biscuit range in uh, 2003 or something, they had to decide between points of parity and points of difference. The points of parity for ITC Sunfeast would be, it's a biscuit. We can have milk biscuits, we can have cream biscuits, we can have jelly biscuits, right? And we can have flavored biscuits, orange biscuits, orange flavored cream biscuits, pineapple flavored cream biscuit. These would be points of parity. Every other competitor has it. Now, if I go to buy a biscuit, I would see whether these elements are there in a brand. Okay, then I will buy points of parity. Points of difference, what makes Sunfeast biscuit different? innovativeness pricing strategy sunfeast is not cheap but it's not very costly also it has different flavors it gives me something else which which is not available in let's say parleji or uh, britannia so these are the points of difference and points of parity both are important for brand positioning model okay so uh, let's take an example from the outside world that is uh, that's the um, the international world we can see that many brands uh, sorry uh, before coming to the international example let me explain this many brands point look at mark making the competitors pod into a pop for the category and thereby create a leadership position by introducing a new pod that's what sunfeast did sunfeast took Britannia's and um, um, uh, Parley's biscuits and their points of parity which we have discussed and made it a points, points of difference and made it a points of parity saying that I am having this plus I will give you something else which is my point of difference. So that is a strategy which companies use for uh, introducing new products. Take an existing product take what is different from it, make it essential in your product, then add something else. So the essential would be points of parity, difference would be point of difference. Coming to an example which I mentioned, we'll take BMW in the international market. BMW was smart enough to understand that in the US market, there was uh, there, were, there, were, there were two types of cars, there were two types of uh, things, performance in the car and luxury. Most of the cars were either scoring good points on luxury but not on performance. Some cars were having the opposite uh, effect. Some were having scoring good points on luxury but not on uh, performance. Some on performance and not on luxury. BMW came and said both we will give you. So luxury was a point of parity for, uh, sorry, a point of difference on performance and a point of parity on luxury with respect to luxury cars. So in the luxury car segment, BMW said we have luxury. That's our point of parity. But we will also give you performance, which is our point of difference. If you look at it from the performance uh, uh, cars, the point of difference would be, yes, luxury. And the point of parity would be performance. Okay, if you're, if you're getting confused, you can go back again and see. But these three examples, I think you should make you understand what are the points of what is the difference between points of parity and points of luxury uh, points of uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, points of difference and points of parity so uh, it came up with a very uh, good slogan clever slogan called the ultimate driving machine okay so two questions often arise in brand marketing that is what makes a brand strong how do you build a strong brand? These two questions will always come up when it comes to strategic brand management process. And to help answer both, we need to understand the concept of customer-based brand equity. 
in one of our previous or uh, earliest classes this semester we have taken this concept customer based brand equity i had sent you an a harvard business review article in which we are discussed how consumers are focused uh, how companies are focused more on sales process targets whereas they are in, uh, ignoring customer and customer based brand equity is very important again to reiterate what i said in one of my early classes the cbbe that is the customer based brand equity approach concept approaches brand equity from the perspective of the consumer not from the perspective of the company i have something i want to sell it it doesn't matter whether the consumer wants it or not i am going to sell it that's not the way to understand con consumer based brand equity sony walkman definitely did that i have a product and then i'm going to send it to the market whether the market exists or not it's a very rare rare case of course we know what happened with that ultimately it was killed by ipod who came up with a better uh, product keeping customer based brand equity in mind till the end till ipod was released sony walkman was doing good they changed from cassettes to cds but they didn't change from cassettes to digital players microchips which was a big mistake apple came and thought if we give microchips the company the consumer will have more songs so we'll we will we, we'll be giving we'll keep consumer in mind and that's what apple did and scored a point and 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 completely put sony walkman out of the business so <clears throat> looking at consumer brand equity from the brand equity from the consumer's point of view is very important the differential effect that brand knowledge has on consumer has on consumer response to the marketing of that brand for example hitachi and general electric what this point says what this point here says that each brand each company will have different responses from the uh, uh, audience for example hitachi and uh, general electric they had the same types of set uh, products television sets if i'm not wrong in the 90s which they they had a joint venture and they sold almost similar type of television sets but hitachi sold it for 75 dollars more than uh, general electric 20 years back 75 dollars was a huge thing so it was like a premium but can you believe that the hitachi's television which was 75 dollars more expensive sold more than general electric because people perceived hitachi more as a television uh, manufacturer than general electric they had a tie up both were manufacturing jointly but hitachi hitachi was successful because of consumer response consumer response to the uh product or the marketing of that particular brand okay consumer based based uh, brand equity occurs when the consumer has high level of awareness and familiarity with the brand in other words this is known as brand awareness and holds strong favorable and unique brand association in memory in other words this is known as brand recall when somebody asks about can you tell top 5 brands in this category the person should say my brand then it means that they have high brand recall that is point number 2 they should also be knowing about my brand in the first place that is point number 1 brand awareness brand recall both are important when it comes to strategic brand management process and in that we are discussing now uh a positioning brand positioning model okay so brand positioning is the act of designing the company's offers and image so that it occupies a distinct and valued place in the customer target customer's mind shaping what the customer thinks and what the company wants the customer to think would be positioning that's what we are taking here so to do this to make sure they understand brand positioning model the marketers need to know who is the target audience for that they need to do market segmentation 
we had done a lot of exercises in market segmentation in the last uh, semester i'm not going to get into that but to give a, a, a brief uh, um, uh, detail that is market segmentation means segmenting the markets according to many different things can be demographic segmentation psycho psychographic segmentation segmentation according to uh, gender or sex or income level education level buying habits browsing habits so it can be anything so who is the target consumer who are my main competitors second thing third thing is how brand how the brand is similar to these competitors points of parity and how the brand is different from them points of difference so these four things are uh, important when you are doing using brand positioning model for strategic brand management okay so with that we end brand positioning model we have two more models which help in the first step of strategic brand management process and that is the second one is brand resonance models this model will also add in identifying and making brand plans that's a step number one which we are discussing in the process of brand strategic brand management okay so brand resonance what does resonance mean resonance means something is resonating with me i know about something i feel about something they say uh, the president's message resonated with me because i kind of think about it the same way okay or my leaders uh, message resonated did not resonate with me because i don't agree with what she said or what he said okay so brand resonance model describes how to create intense active loyalty relationship with customers that's basically it resonance means relationship loyalty active relationship with the customers after positioning we come to brand resonance second step to this we need to understand who are you what is our brand identity what are you brand meaning what does the what what meaning does are you planning to convey to the audience and what meaning do they get what about you what do i think or feel about you the brand responses i have a brand i see a brand what is my response to that brand do i like it do i don't like it am i going to buy it am i going to buy it because it's a necessity or am i going to buy it because i'm loyal to it even though there are cheaper products i am still going to buy this a little more expensive product because uh, of this which will lead to the fourth one what about you and me that is the relationship the connection most important step in the brand resonation resonance model is the fourth one that is what is the connection i have do i have a connection in the first place or am i am i just buying it for the sake of buying it and if if that is the case then if a better model comes with a cheaper price i'm going to shift over there but if i have a good relationship good association good loyalty then i will stay with you so that is the what i mean by brand resonance okay so if you look at the if you look at the uh, uh, pyramid model here you can see the model starts with i'm so sorry that's not the one the model starts with salience right it starts with salience and it uh, has performance imagery judgments feelings and resonance that's resonance is on the top and you can see on the top here it has a very small place that means it's the most difficult to enjoy resonance is the most difficult to enjoy salience means who are you and the objective is brand awareness if you can see here objective here is the stage of brand uh, development so first step the is a salience the objective is deep broad band awareness we come to the next point where we talk about the performance and imagery of the brand here we are discussing about the meanings and the objective is to make people understand the points of parity and the points of 
difference right and the third one is the third one here is the response which we had discussed and the objective is to get positive reactions positive accessible reactions here is where we, we the consumer will make judgments and, pa and uh, pass judgments and have feelings about the particular brand okay and the last step is the relationship which is last step is the relationship what about you and me the objective is intense active loyalty okay so you can see this model also I'll, 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 um, this model also here you can see that salience has category identifications and needs are satisfied their performance primary characteristics and secondary features product reliability are these there in your are these are, is a product performing according to these things what are the user profiles imagery purchase and usage situations personality and values we go to the next step in the resonance model we get judgments quality uh, is it quality high quality low quality is it credible those are judgments i find the product fun would be feeling and on top is the resonance which means uh, loyalty attachment community and engagement you can pause the video here and check these things out and then we can move on if you want so you can pause now good now we move on with the next slide jumping so i made a small uh, brand resonance uh, brand resonance model based on the previous one for parachute hair oil i've hand drawn this and this is what i want as an assignment from you for as a second assignment for brand planning and management you can see here that from a parachute from a, a point of view of parachute hair oil i have hand drawn this so i'm so sorry about the handwriting salience is most commonly recalled available in many variants and sizes performance is that it has round bottle it is fragrant and it is multi purpose by the way there is a story about uh, i was i was going through when i was doing research i came across a story about parachute uh, brand in, in the sense that performance wise uh, parachute hair oil parachute oil the owners of parachute hair oil did not sell in smaller bottles in the beginning okay they had bulk bottles and they wanted to get into smaller um, bottles but they realized that the 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 retailers the people with shops were not ready to keep their bottles because another brand had done this and you know what the problem was rats rats love coconut oil and because the plastic the bottle was plastic not parachute some other brand uh, plastic many retailers had seen that whenever they keep smaller bottles of uh, 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 plastic bottles of hair, uh, coconut oil rats would chew them and the oil would leak destroying the uh, rest of the products below so what they did uh, parachute before they launched they understood why they understood that they have to solve this performance pro problem and they realized one thing that is because of those bottles were square not round and the rats could get a good grip on the uh, square bottles so that they could chew it and then the oil would leak what is the solution what we see right now that is a round bottle of parachute rats couldn't hold it properly and thus parachute was having a good run and it's still having a good run it's one of the top in india right now uh, so it has a good performance it has round bottle it has imagery the imagery is it's, it's for all classes uh, it's 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 not a status symbol you can't call parachute oil hey i'm using parachute oil i'm 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 having status symbol no but there are celebrity endorsement it's not cheap uh, it's not, you know, kanji pinji kind of a thing and it's reliable. The judgments about them would be that it is durable, good quality, affordable, superiority, they're superior. 
and social approval feelings okay people will not think bad of me if i'm using parachute coconut oil it it creates a warmth and and it's kind of reliable and on top there are repeat customers that is resonance that is the resonance which they want repeat customers attachment to the brand and did you notice one thing parachute doesn't sell itself as hair oil it says coconut oil so people can use it as edible oil also and that's what parachute says they confirm to all the things which an edible oil uh edible oil uh has to confirm so parachute hair parachute oil is actually not parachute hair oil unless it's branded now there's a new one advanced uh, aloe vera something that's branded as parachute hair oil but parachute the classic parachute uh, oil is parachute coconut oil not parachute hair oil because if you do hair oil it becomes a cosmetic product and excise tax duty tax is more for edible product tax is less smart move again so but that's not the case they would still uh, be a number one if that was not the case so your assignment today is you can send it to me before the lockdown ends no hurries before april 14th you can send me come up with a brand resonance model for any brand you want any brand you want you choose you like except two thing my only my only my only instruction is that you cannot use any noodles brand any smartphone brand those two things you cannot use they are very easy use something which challenges you which makes you go beyond what is there in your mind noodles instant noodles and smartphones are the ones which we use very basically very commonly so you know what it is try to get something different and send it to me through email you can hand draw it like this you can use i i did hand drawing because i don't have a pc so i did hand drawing and click the picture but if you have a pc or a laptop at home you can do it in word document and send me or you can do it like hand drawn just like this make it legible take a picture and send it to me by 14th i will give you marks for this based on how good you are give a small explanation of what you write okay so we will uh, move forward to the third one we come to the third one and we almost uh, we we reach during 40 minutes so we need to close it as soon as possible so how to trace value creation process the brand value model it's a better understand the financial impact of marketing expenditures and investments to create loyal customers and strong brand positioning is done resonance is done and now we are coming to brand value okay a brand value chain is a structured mean for brandages to understand where and how value is created brands need to create value it can be created in the product it can be created in the market it can be created during the uh, program marketing program but it has to be created and where exactly to look at to improve that particular process certain stages will be of greater interest to different members of the organization so if you look at this model here brand value model here you can see there are stages there are uh, stages and there are multipliers so the first stage is marketing program investment product communication trade employee others will be there multipliers are those elements which will impact and multiply the value it can be divided divided also but usually we look at multipliers so distinctiveness relevance integrated value and excellence are there the second step is customer mindset awareness association attitudes attachment and activities the multipliers are marketplace conditions competitive reactions channel support customer size and profile market performance is the third stage and the multipliers there are invest investor sentiments and the final stage is share holder value stock price each of them will be um each of them each of these stages will be uh interesting to different people in the organization okay for example the ceo will be interested in this one the operations manager would be interested in this one what is the performance in the market the 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 marketing department will be probably 
uh, interested in this one okay the guys who are creating the product will be probably interested in this one so each stage will have different people interested in that and each stage will have something called multipliers multipliers can be divis you know some if, if the product doesn't have distinctiveness then it might not be a multiplier okay so multiplier means it will multiply the um, value in every stage you can see there are four stages each stage has multipliers and the last final stage is shareholder value where the money comes okay so this is the final thing with the brand positioning you can see the brand positioning here first model the second model and the third model here this is keeping everything together starting from below it goes like this okay so brand positioning model brand resonance model and brand value chain model are there i will keep this like this for a minute so that you can pause if you want take down notes now good so with that i think we come to the end of this video it's gone gone quite long 40 40 40 minutes i guess 42 um there are three more or two more videos coming depending on how long it takes to um so we have discussed the first step in strategic brand management process and uh, from this point i will go to the next one in the next video so thank you for watching and uh, keep keep in touch send me your assignments by 14th and keep yourself safe from coronavirus hopefully you're all safe keep safe and uh, make sure that everything is done so stay safe guys thanks a lot for watching